this is a Rabbit R1. It's an AI pocket companion. It's been the talk of the town in the tech world. And to be completely honest, I didn't get it. I really didn't. But now that I finally have it in my hands, I get it. Kind of. Let me break it down. First things first, this thing looks way better in person. I mean, I understand why people are gushing about the design. Nostalgia. Holding it in my hands, I instantly travel back to my childhood. With this little cute rabbit bobbing up and down the screen, I get 90s digital pet vibes. Think the Tamagotchi or Giga Pets. It's such a fidgety gadget. I mean, it really taps into my need to constantly need to interact with something. I mean, it's got this scroll wheel. You can shake it to access the settings menu and you can turn it clockwise to access the virtual keyboard. But the question is, what exactly is the R1? What is it designed to do? Rabbit's whole mission is that it wants to wean you away from the messy ecosystem of apps. When you're on your phone, if you want to order food, you have to go to DoorDash and interact with a whole bunch of drop-down menus, check boxes before actually completing the order. And then when you want to play music, you have to head over to a different app. And then when you want to interact with AI, you have to head over to ChatGPT. And when you want to hail a ride share, you have to navigate to Uber. And when you want to identify an object with your camera, you have to use Google Lens. With the Rabbit R1, you can do all of those things in one device by using voice commands with natural language. I can point it at someone or something and it will describe it to me. I see a smiling woman wearing a striped vest over a black top, standing in an office environment with desks and computers around her. She appears to be in a good mood and comfortable in her surroundings. I can also turn into a selfie camera by using the scroll wheel. You can, by the way, see the photos R1 took in the rabbit hole, which is a companion site you can visit on your browser. My favorite part is that I can show it some ingredients and it will make some suggestions on what dishes I can make. Based on the fresh produce I see, such as the apples, bananas, and oranges, as well as the container of nuts, you have the makings for some healthy and tasty snacks or light meals. A few ideas I can suggest. You could make a fruit salad with the apples, bananas, and oranges, perhaps adding a sprinkle of the nuts for some crunch and protein. And also, I can ask it to summarize one of my reviews from Mashable. Review discusses the Rabbit R1, a device that stirs up nostalgia for the user. Two things that I don't love, though, is that there isn't a volume rocker. So if you want to increase or decrease the volume, you have to shake R1, head to settings, select it with the side button, scroll down to media, press and hold the side button, and then use the scroll wheel to make it louder or quieter. It's a lot. Rabbit R1 uses an LAM, a large action model, which allows it to actually step in and do things for you. So if you were to ask ChatGPT, for example, to order your favorite dish from a local restaurant, it would do absolutely nothing. But if you ask Rabbit R1, it will act on your behalf and it will order your Uber, it will order that DoorDash for you. It acts for you, though I haven't been able to order food with mine for some odd reason. Order me some Chipotle, please. Got it. I'll find you something to eat. DoorDash may take a while to load on Rabbit OS and may not be available in all regions. There seems to be an issue with the food ordering service. Please try again later. There are some things about the Rabbit R1 that surprises me and not in a good way. Like I thought I would be able to connect it to my phone, allowing me to text my friends with natural language. And it doesn't even have a timer and I can't set it to my local time. It can't connect to public Wi-Fi that has login pages. I was also really excited about using the R1 for foreign language menus while traveling. Like I would have just loved it if it could translate a Spanish menu, for example, to English. But doesn't seem to do that either. I've had some coworkers ask me, can you browse the web on the screen? No, you can't. I mean, I'm not sure why you'd want to on such a small screen. I also instinctively find myself wanting to say, hey rabbit, in the same way that we say, hey Google, or hey Siri. But you have to press and hold the side button to interact with the AI, which isn't a bad thing. It means it's not always listening. 
But again, I still have that urge to invoke the AI with my voice. Everything I wanted from Rabbit R1, it doesn't seem to quite have yet. Chances are a lot of these features will become a thing in future updates. So far, I'm seeing this as a really fun device. I can see this being an accessibility gadget that benefits people with vision impairment. Ironically, I can see this being great for someone who doesn't understand tech. It just makes things super simple and lets you use natural language to get whatever you want. A lot of people are asking, why isn't this an app? Why not make this a super app? I'll answer that question with another question. Do you really think I'd be standing here talking about this if this wasn't packaged in this cute little orange box? Come on. The Rabbit R1 is only $200 and claims that you don't need a subscription to use it, but how long would that last, right? Maybe I'm wrong, but once the hype dies down and all the nerds like me are done grabbing it off the shelves, what's next? We'll just have to wait and see. Check out my full hands-on review of the Rabbit R1 on Mashable.